The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. When my husband Casey was a teenager, his parents had a refrain, a kind of mantra they would say to him every time that he left the house. A lot of people do this with their kids, I think. I send my children off each morning with the reminder, be brave and be kind. I've heard parents of teens through the years shout all sorts of reminders at their kids as they grabbed the keys and headed out the door. Be safe. Make good choices. Be home by curfew. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. We hope to leave our children with these last words as they head out into the scary world. We're giving them instructions or directions so that they will safely navigate whatever difficulties come their way. But Casey's parents, they said something different. Their last words before he ventured out each and every time, from when he was a teen until after he went away to college, they were always the same. They said to him simply, remember who you are. With the typical dismissiveness of a teenager, Casey usually rolled his eyes at these words. Duh, how could I forget who I am? But deep down, he got it. It sunk inside him so thoroughly that he remembers it with crystal clarity to this day. In fact, it's a phrase that has echoed through every decision and every major moment of his life since then. Remember who you are. Because the truth is, what Casey's teenage self needed most wasn't threats or reminders of the rules or last instructions on how to stay safe. In order to face the world with all of its joys and sorrows, its exhilarations and temptations, what he needed most was the precious, sacred reminder of who he really is. He is a son, a grandson, a friend. He is someone who knows right from wrong. He is someone who knows how to make good decisions. He is someone who knows God. He is someone who is beloved by God. Remember who you are. That is essentially what today is all about. It's about remembering who we are. Today is the feast of the baptism of Jesus. Every year on this Sunday, we hear this story. When Jesus goes to John, his cousin, in order to be baptized. It's a funny story, really. Jesus goes out into the desert to be baptized by his cousin, and John's first reaction is, what are you doing here? John knows that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus is the Messiah, and John doesn't understand why Jesus would come to him to be baptized. Jesus' cryptic reply is that this is just what needs to happen. So John relents, and baptizes his own savior. Jesus goes down into the water, 
And as he comes up, the heavens are torn apart. And the Holy Spirit descends like a dove, and a voice proclaims, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. There are a lot of extraordinary things about this. The heavens are torn open. I can't even visualize what that looks like. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove, whatever that means, and a voice from heaven speaks. We don't know whether it was a whisper or a shout, whether it was heard by everyone there or by Jesus alone. We just know that the voice says this, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. That probably doesn't seem extraordinary to you. We have the benefit of history and of hindsight, of knowing what will come next. We know that Jesus is pretty amazing, that he is God's son, that he is beloved, that he will live and act in ways that are well-pleasing to God. But remember, when this story happens, Jesus hasn't done anything yet. He's been born. He's been circumcised and named. He has one little episode as a teenager, but that's it. God proclaims that Jesus is his beloved, well-pleasing son before Jesus has done or said or taught a single thing. Before Jesus has resisted temptation, before he has healed a single person, before he has taught in the synagogue and astounded people with his wisdom, before he has multiplied food to feed many, before he has told the stories that delight and challenge people, before he has convinced anyone to follow him. Scholars often speculate about why exactly Jesus was baptized. Why did the one who knew no sin need forgiveness of sin? Why did the one from whom salvation would come participate in the sacrament of salvation? Some of them say that the descent of the Holy Spirit and the booming voice from heaven were meant for John, so that he would know who Jesus really was. Some of them think that was meant for the onlookers, so that those around would come to believe. But I wonder... I wonder if maybe it was Jesus who needed that affirmation. I wonder if it was Jesus who needed baptism to remember who he was. To be rooted and grounded in the knowledge that he was God's well-beloved son. To gain from that declaration strength and power for the days ahead. Jesus was about to head into the world that would revile him and eventually kill him. And God threw at him these parting words. Remember who you are. As it goes for Jesus, so too it goes for us. In his baptism, Jesus shows us the truth about our own baptism. In his life with God, Jesus teaches us a pattern for our life with God. Baptism is essentially about remembering who we are. It's the reminder, the touchstone, this moment that we can return to again and again to reset ourselves. When you have to go out and face the world and all that it throws at you, you can do so rooted in the knowledge of who you are. Remember your baptism. Remember who you are. You are God's beloved child. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. You are forgiven of your sins. You are nourished by the body and blood of Jesus. You are a member of the body of Christ. That is who you really are. Baptism and worship 
are not things that we do to earn God's love. They are things that we do to remember who we really are, to get back in touch with our truest selves. Because when we remember who we are, when we remember that we are really God's beloved, well-pleasing children, we can do incredible things. Not to earn God's love and favor, but because of it. Because we remember who we are and what we are capable of. We are beloved by God, so we can love our neighbors as ourselves. We are forgiven by God, so we can resist evil and ask for forgiveness. We are nourished by the body and blood of Jesus, so we can proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We are marked as Christ's own forever so that we can seek and serve Christ in all people. We are filled by the power of the Holy Spirit so we can strive for justice and peace among all people. In the end, Casey's parents had it right. He didn't need threats or instructions. He just needed to remember who he was. Everything else, every good decision, every hard choice, every incredible action would flow out of remembering who he was. That's true for you and me, too. You didn't come here today to earn God's love or to check a box or to fulfill an obligation. You came here to remember who you are. You are God's child. You are beloved. God is well pleased with you. Not because of anything you've done or anything that you've said. Because that's who God is. And that's who you really are. Everything you ever do starts there. Starts here. Starts with this. Remember, remember who you are. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.